What's going on guys? This is Crozen and welcome to the Dark Souls 3 Pure Quality Strength and Dexterity Build. So, I first off, I gotta say, I sincerely apologize. I know I've been gone for quite a long time, but this has literally been the busiest college semester that I have had yet. So thankfully, that is over and I can get back to spending the majority of my time making more videos for you guys. So, Dark Souls 3, this is literally the first game outside of Fallout 4 that I posted on my channel. So I don't know what you guys will think, but if you want me to continue on with doing some more Dark Souls 3 builds, let me know. And let me know what you think about continuing on with doing some more Fallout 4 guides as well. So, for a quality build... Basically, for those of you who don't know what a quality build is, it's one of those builds where you level up strength and dexterity, and you level both of them up really high, so you're kind of like a combo build. You can use a lot of different types of weapons that you normally otherwise wouldn't be able to use, say if you went with just a pure strength or a pure dex build. So that's why this is a very good build for any beginners out there or for anyone who is new to the game and wants to test out a lot of different weapons, because with this build, you, I would say you can probably use about at least half of all the weapons in the game because you can refine them add I should say you could infuse them and add the refined gem to them and you could make them to where they scale with both strength and dexterity so as you see with this build we're not going to be using a lot of intelligence we're not going to be using a lot of faith it's mainly just a pure out weapons build we're only going to be using enough intelligence and faith in order to get the Karthus flame arc that way we can add an extra hundred bonus attack power damage to our weapons and that is how we go about doing this build. So to start out your character, you want to make sure that you pick the knight class. I always go with the knight because they have the least amount of luck. They only have 7 luck, which in my opinion, for the majority of builds in this game, luck isn't going to be too useful at all. So you want to keep that to the bare minimum and that way, if you look... The Knight and the Pyro class are the only two classes that are like that. And the Knight is better suited for a quality build because they have a good amount of strength, a good amount of dexterity to start the game. And they don't have a lot of intelligence and faith either, so we don't have to have wasted points. So I will be right back guys and I will show you how this build looks like in the game. Show you how the stats are and some of the weapons and the gear and the rings and everything else I have. And I will be right back. Alright, so here we are in the stat menu, and as you see in some of my attributes, very basic. I, I got a Vigor at 31, I got Attunement at 14, Endurance at 25, Vitality 15, Strength at 35, Dex at 40, and Intellect and Faith both at 10, and then Luck back at that basic 7 that we started out with. So very basic, a very linear path, I didn't really have to do. Uh, too much customizing getting uh, this build ready as you see I, I just leveled up vigor every now and then I got it to 31 I leveled up attunement to 14 so that way we can get two slots as far as spells and I leveled up endurance every now and then I kept vitality the same as when we started out and the majority of the points that I put went into strength and dexterity and I leveled up intelligence and faith in order to get the Karthus flame arc and then the luck basically at 7 when we started. So, my weapons. As you see, I got the Refine Uchi Gatana, I got the Refine Astora Greatsword, and I got the Pontiff Knight Curved Sword. So, taking a look at those three weapons, they offer a lot of different versatility. I mean, each weapon has a different attack speed, each weapon has different move sets. So it really makes for a nice combo build. I'm sure you guys saw that Astora Greatsword in some of that PvP clip there. It's got a very long charge that is able to hit enemies. And also this power attack is very deadly. And the cool thing about this is that you're able to put the Karthus Flame Arc on the Astora Greatsword and on the Uchi Gatana. Unfortunately, you cannot put it on the Karthus, not the Karthus, but the Pontiff Knight Curve Sword. But... This sword is still very nice to have. It's very low weight, so you don't have to worry about it overweighting you as far as having a slower roll. And it's very quick, and it offers a little bit more versatility to this build. So, taking a look at what the Karthus Flame Arc does, this is mainly what I wanted to design this build around. So if you take a look at my right hand weapon 2, this is my store of great sword damage, which is 531 currently, while it is unbuffed. Now, if I buff the Astora Greatsword, that increases to 624. So, it's roughly around 100 extra attack power 
with this buff on e either the Astora Greatsword or the Uchigatana. So it offers a very nice damage boost that's really going to help you whether you are facing a boss or you're doing some PvP. Every little bit of damage helps and it's very nice to have a build where you can at least buff a few weapons because this is a quality build. So looking further in some of the gear that I have, obviously these are my three main weapons. I went with the Grass Crest Shield. Why I went with this shield is because it offers a slightly increased stamina recovery speed, which is going to be really nice. I'm sure a lot of you guys already know how that works. Stamina <laughs> recovers very slowly, so I went with the Grass Crest Shield and also the Chlorinthy Ring, since these do indeed stack and you get a nice little stamina recovery speed added to your character. And then also the Pyro Flame, that one's pretty self-explanatory, so we can get the Karthus Flame Arc. And also for this second slot, there's a few things that you can go with for this. You can either go with the Power Within, but right now this spell is insanely nerfed. It's not as good as it was in Dark Souls 1. But there are a few other options that you can do with this second slot as well. You can go with the Poison Mist, which requires 10 Faith, which we have. You can also go with Flash Sweat, which would be really nice if you're facing an enemy that does a lot of damage as far as fire. And then you can also use the Profuse Sweat, which gives you a not <laughs> can't speak, which gives you a lot of nice damage uh, resistances as far as bleeding and curse and things of that sort. So uh, you got a, a few little cool utility spells that you can use there for that second slot. And as far as my armor goes, uh, basically you can use whatever you want here. You don't have to use this set that I'm using. Basically as long as you stay below the 70% weight ratio, you will be fine. If you go over 70% then you will have that fat man's roll and you by all means you do not want to have that on any kind of class. So make sure that you stay below 70% and you should be fine. And as far as my rings. Uh, as you guys have seen earlier, I went with the Chlorinthy Ring, and the other three rings are the Knight's Ring, which gives me a plus 5 to Strength. Also, I went with the Hunter's Ring, gives me a plus 5 to Dex. And then lastly, the Karthus Milk Ring, which gives me another plus 3 to Dex, and gives me that nice little invisibility roll that you see here. So, looking at those three rings, they offer me a bonus of 8 Dexterity. 5 strength and I get a nice little invisibility roll so that makes it to where we have 40 dex and 35 strength otherwise we would have 30 strength and 32 dex right now so having these rings really helps and I think they are very suited for a quality build in general since we're not going to be needing rings that boost our say our magic damage or anything like that since we are not using any kind of magic or faith with this build so that is really it guys i know that was a lot of information to cover but i think i got through most of it and i think you guys have a better understanding of how this build works and other things to note is how you want to go about arranging some of these stats and how you want to level up your character early on in the game. Well, I would say to focus a lot on Vigor, that way you have a little bit more HP. That's going to be very useful earlier on in the game. And also level up Endurance every now and then until you reach 25 at this level. And then lastly, depending on which one you want to go for first, Strength and Dexterity, they both have to be leveled up. But you want to make sure you figure out what kind of weapons you're going to want to use. So if you don't want to use these three weapons that I am using, make sure you figure out what the attribute requirement is. So that way you are able to figure out which one you want to level up first. So for example, as you see with the Astora Greatsword, or a better, a better example would be the Pontiff Knight Curve Sword. It requires 18 Dexterity, but only 12 Strength. So I would be leveling up Dexterity a little more than Strength early on in the game if I went with this kind of weapon. So that should do it guys and I hope this gives you a better understanding of this build and let me know if you guys enjoyed this video and let me know if you have any questions in the comments and let me know if there's anything I could do better for future videos and I will see you guys later. Peace.